Hello everybody and welcome back to Comston Farm. So in the last episode then, I left you as we were wrapping and doing some baling. As you can see, we have quite a few wrapped bales. How many exactly? I'm not 100% sure. It's over 100. But we did sell a few, so I don't actually have a proper figure. But just look at that. Now I said I wasn't sure what I was going to do with the bale situation. The baler didn't quite... wasn't quite what I thought. Well, I found a solution. Say hello to my new little toy. I've decided to go down the loose way of doing it. So, still swath it, but just pick it up with this thing. This is a lot cheaper. It's a forage wagon. It picks it up off the floor. And this thing I got off Mod Hub. It is awesome. 200,000 litres it holds. 55,000 to buy, half the price of the baler, so I've got a bit of money in the bank and a new solution. And because we've got the mixer, it kind of makes sense. But then I also stumbled across another problem. The silos on this map don't take straw, don't take hay, don't take grass. What is that about? So I had to find a solution for that. So that is why I decided to make over this area. Look at this thing. This is awesome. What a stunning looking little shed this is. This is a hayloft. And this is the area where it's next to my uh, my field here. I've just got my torch on. It's a little bit dark. Soybean field. It's in this little area here where you might see in a few episodes ago, we had a chicken coop here that mm, didn't last long. Right next to where the, uh, the cows are just in there. This little area here. This thing's awesome. It will hold up to 5 million litres of straw and hay. You just simply put it in that side and it comes out the other side. Just literally a storage shed. How cool is that? Now, I went through and did all this and then realised, oh, it only takes straw and hay. It won't take my grass. So, as you can imagine, I didn't want to go through all that again. This thing. I found this on the mod hub. It holds 2 million litres of everything. So, grass has gone in there. And it's nice and cheap. 11 grand. Beautiful thing. So, that's where my grass is. That's where my hay and straw is. We're going down loose. This thing looks really empty now. All my bales have gone. Grass is obviously what was in there has been converted and gone into the grass storage. Same with the straw. Same with the hay. It's all been converted and gone into the irrelevant places. This is empty now. It's just got some wool and eggs in. Now, speaking of eggs, I do believe, looking at my stock checker, that eggs, November, which is where we are now, is the best time to sell these. And at the minute, well, we've exceeded the price it should be. 4,200 is the maximum price we can get, which should give me around 49,000. Dead, that is. But at the minute, the price is just a little bit higher, giving me 50,258 for what I've got in stock. So, the first mission of the day. Let's sell some eggs. Somebody is going to be getting a little bit quiet again soon because we're in November, we're going through winter. It's going to get a bit quiet on the farm, so we will be skipping a few months to be able to do some things. But for now, though, we can sort out the eggs. Just wait till Jan. I can't wait till Jan because Jan time. There's a lot of things that we can get rid of. Or see, get rid of. We can sell. Let's just have a quick look. So looking on here, then, the silage bales that are up in them field, in that grass field, £270,000 worth. Now, don't let that fool you. Oh, well, actually, you know what? You know what? I was going to say that isn't just them bales because we have got other silage stored, but we, we actually haven't, have we? Because the, the mixer has got 721 litres in it. Yeah, so have we really got 450, sorry, 475,000 litres? of bales in that field. Is that field alone really going to give us 270,000? Wow, that's kind of shot me there. I kind of thought some of it's the field, some of it we've got stored elsewhere, but actually we haven't. We are out of silage. Now, we're not going to use any of them bales. We are going to just sell all them bales. The next time we cut the grass, which we might, if we're lucky, get one more cut in before winter hits us. If we do, we'll do one more cut, and I'm actually going to put it into the silage pit by the cow pasture. So where the cows are, there's a silage pit there. We're going to do it properly, put it in there, cover it over for winter, 
and then around Jan time we should be good to go. The tally handler's got a bucket on it. We've got rid of the bail grab now for that. So yeah, all's looking good. So what else can we do? We've got some straw and grass. We don't need to worry about that. A little bit of slurry. We are stacking up actually on the slurry. Nearly 80,000 litres. But linseed as well. 233,000 in Jan. So we're going to do a good half a million in Jan. Oh, Jan. I'm looking forward to Jan. So let's just back into here then. I'm going to grab this awesome little autoload trailer. And I don't normally like these trailers because I've seen as you turn, it's got one of the pivoting axles. But the good thing is I've got a mod which allows you to lock the axles so we can unlock it now. When I back up, you see, it will turn. Normally an absolute nightmare to back up. But it's an axle locking mod. So if we get it straight, sometimes you have to get it straight. You see, just sort of like twitch then. Now, it just locks it and backs up like a normal trailer. Absolute awesome. All right, let's go load some eggs. Eggs are all on board. Let's head over to the best place, which is the Cotswold Stores. I'll see you there. You know, every time I bypass that field, just, just back there, there's a field which I showed you in a previous episode. That's another barley field that's gone bad again. It's withered. I don't know what it is with farmers leaving fields to just die. A lot of money lost. I keep looking at it, you know, and I keep thinking, I really, I want it. The way it sounds, it's just over 10 grand a month. And I, I really want it. Because I've got a bit of an idea. But these go, they're going to go a bit slow. So we'll, uh, money's racing up. Because in Jam, we're going to get linseed we're going to sell. And we're going to sell the signage bales. We're going to end up with a nice bit of money. I think we're going to be safe for a good few months. 48,241 and 3,453 environmental score. 50k, what a nice way to start the day. So I really do want that field. Because I'm thinking of going for a crop that I'm not sure if I've actually done yet. I mean, I have done it on farm sim, but I'm not sure if I've actually done it on a series. I think we put some in on the Western Wilds, but I majorly got that wrong in timing-wise and didn't have enough time before the end of the series to harvest everything. But I really want to go for sugar cane. I haven't done that for a long time, and it means we can get a nice, big, expensive forage wagon. We'll get that on lease. We'll be able to just sort of get some of that. Now, it's not the best per thousand litres, but boy, you get a lot of it. And it regrows again, I think, three times before you have to go plant again. Now, it's expensive to plant. Don't get me wrong. It's not the cheapest thing to plant. But this field, full of sugar cane. Ooh, I can see the pound signs flooding in. What do you think? Is it worth a go? Now, we're not going to get the field just yet because sugar cane can't go in until, I think it's April. Let's have a look. Oh, okay, it's March, not April. So sugar cane, we can't plant it. Earliest is March. So I would be silly to go and get the field now. As eager as I am to get the field, I would be silly. I think we should wait till March. Then we'll rent the field. We'll be able to sort it out. And I'm just thinking we, we'll cultivate it. We'll clean it up. We'll put in the new one. We'll do the lime properly this time. Put the lime down first. Then we'll go put the sugar cane in. I keep wanting to say sugar beet. No, sugar cane. I think that's going to be good. So we'll part this thing back up. You know what? I'm, I'm sort of... I was getting a little bit worried about this series because no loan, no productions. It is a bit of a struggle to get money. You, you just have to do it off crops alone. So I was a little bit worried. But bank balance is looking a lot better now. I'm starting to feel a bit more happier. And I know we've got a good half a mil coming in in a few months time from selling linseed and silage bales. So, yeah, starting to feel a lot better about this now. So, let's go and grab this then. We've got soybeans to do. We need this. I think... I think that field is going to be good for sugar cane. I keep thinking about it. It is a big field, but then we need a big field because we need the quantity. Sugar cane, you get about £700 per thousand litres. So, if we can get the quantity... Then it's going to pay. And obviously, two or three goes, I think, of harvesting. Let's see, can we get this round here? It's going to be a bit of an interesting one. Head is coming with us. It's not stopped us yet. So, oh, hello. I've left the sheep open. But I've not left the sheep. I left the gate open for the sheep. Sorry, sheep. So 
So we need something also to put in the soybean field I'm about to harvest now. But over winter, we're not going to have much dog. Out the way. Yeah, you just just get out of the way. Casually walking down the road, mind his own business, not a care in the world. Living the dog's life. Are you any time going to just move over out the way, please? No reaction to the hornets. Oh, dear. Oh, you're going to walk straight through the combine. Oh, where, where did he... Where did he go then? Yeah, no idea where he's gone. Anyway, let's carry on. Time to harvest some soya bean. So let's get the soya bean started. Straw swath is enabled. So we're going to get some straw off this. Then we will put it into the silo. Not that we really need much straw at the minute. Let's just back away a bit. It's a little bit loud. So I'm not sure what to do with the grass field because... Well, we've got over half a million litres of grass in them bales that we had. So we're going to get another cut off it, which we're going to put into the, the, the pit, which is just straight ahead there behind the cow barn by the slurry pit. We're going to put them in there. We're going to do silage the proper way in a pit. But then do I, need, I don't really need to do anything else with that because we've still got 370 odd thousand litres of TMR made up in the mixer. We're just short of a bit of silage I, I will double check but i'm sure that's what we were short of just a bit of silage yeah so looking on here then we've got 231,000 liters of hay still in here and 207,000 liters of straw mineral feed we've got plenty of and it's just silage so if we get one more cut off the grass put it in the pit make some silage we could store it but we'll just put it straight in here or well 250,000 liters if it's in the pit it could stay in the pit it doesn't matter we'll just put some in here but we've got 378,000 liters of TMR. Do we really need the grass field again? I, I, I've got a feeling this is going to see us through to the end of the series. So we could potentially rip up the grass field, turn it back into an arable field, and put another crop in. What do you think about that? Well, going to have a think about that while we watch this worker do some work. It's getting closer to midnight. I tried to get closer to you. Drinking courage from my red cup now I will soon make a move Things aren't going too bad at the minute. We're just coming in for the first unload. Just shy of 23 and a half thousand liters of soybeans so far. And we've done a couple of headlands around and just a little bit of the third one. I think it's set to three headlands, then it will start striping up and down. But look at the straw. That was quite a good thick straw swath. So when the harvest is unloaded, I'm going to grab the class which is attached to that trailer. And I think I'm going to grab my new forage wagon. We're going to give that a go and see what that's like. But this is definitely looks like it's yielded well. So we just need to find out when's the best time to sell soybeans. It'd be nice if it was in Jan as well, wouldn't it? That'd be quite a, an income in Jan. Somehow, I don't think it's going to be. Yeah, I got that a little bit wrong. Jan is actually the worst time for soybeans. It's June is going to be the best time. So I think what we'll do, we'll just put them in the silo. And we'll just wait a little bit till June because the difference is quite a jump, actually. Around about, what, 2,000? Actually, what's it saying at the minute? They're not bad prices at the minute. We're in November. It's only going to get worse. So in Jan, we're down to sort of 2,700. Best time, 6,200 per 1,000 litres. You've got to bear that in mind. 6,246 pounds is the best we can get per 1,000 litres. And we've already got around, what, 24,000 in the trailer 
already in the trailer alone is a nice bit of money. So I can't wait to see what this is going to be like when this is all done, when it's in the silo, what can we expect? Actually, instead of getting the class, the JCB sat here right in front. So let's just go and take the JCB and hook up to this. Now, the good thing with this as well, it's a bit like that baler, that the new Heston baler, the one that put out the smaller bales. The reason I got it is I assumed it was going to be the same as the big Heston bales. It was going to be this it's Heston baler. I assumed they were going to be the same size. But the bonus was it had the silage additive, additive tank, if I can talk, which is why we got a lot more silage bales. Can you see this thing right in front? There's a little white tank on the front. Yeah, this has silage additive in this forage wagon as well. So we're going to get the same outcome. A lot more grass silage additive going in. When we put it in the pit, we'll end up with more silage. Bit of a win-win and a cheaper price. I don't know why I didn't think of this in the first place. So I've just gone and filled up the silage additive tank. Now, only because that baler that we did have, that last one, that i was told and in testing it did actually work signage additive went in when picking up straw now i don't know if that was a glitch on the baler because i'm sure the additive shouldn't work for straw it only works for grass but just in case that is a new thing well i'm gonna put it in here now to see if this drops when we pick up the straw if so we're gonna get a bit of a bonus on the straw it's a win-win in my opinion so let's give this a go then and see i'm really uh, I'm not sure if the silage is gonna or the silage additive is actually gonna work on this. I think that was a glitch with the baler. So we'll turn it on, we'll drop it down, and we'll start going over and picking up some straw and see. Does the silage additive drop? And it's not looking like it, it's still smack on a hundred percent. So yeah, I think that was a, a little glitch with that baler, if I'm honest. I don't think it should have gone down with straw. So it's not a complete waste. I know I just spent a couple hundred quid putting this. You know, silage additive in here but again as soon as we tackle that grass field it's going to help with the uh, the silage what we're going to put in the pit so it's not a waste it will definitely get used now the good thing oh i can't see the good thing about this forage wagon is it has got a bigger pickup than normal so it holds 200,000 liters that's nothing to do with me that is exactly how you can download it from the mod hub but it does have a bigger pickup so if i just slightly go off a bit here you can see where the wheels are. It's picking up outside of the wheels. Not a not ridiculous. You know, it's not like it's oh, it's ten foot either side of it. Nothing ridiculous. But it does have a little bit extra of a pickup on it, which means when you're going around corners, that Bailey you might have seen when I did it a few times, you had to be almost bang on. You know, you off off a little bit, and it was like it missed bits on the corners. This at least it gives a bit of leeway you can go around see look i'm not right on the edges and it still grabs it that is that's what i like so looking at this then we are getting a lot of straw and i definitely think this is the best way bales are good fun don't get me wrong i do like bales but i think this might be my new go-to now i've got my straw shed hay shed and grass and also I've got the TMR mixer now, which is a nice little unit. No massive factory. Yeah, I think this is the way to go. So let's carry on. Let's get a full trailer. So there we go. We've not even got round to the third headland yet and already 200,000 litres of straw. So another good thing about this, which I was just thinking of as going round, which might seem a bit obvious. The beauty over this to bales is that you are picking the straw up. Now, I know you pick the straw up with the baler, you leave the bales behind which yes i know is a bit obvious but it's just another thing to get in the way of that worker who's gonna go oh oh i can't go in i've got to go home because there's a bale right in front of me so the fact that we are just picking it up now and keeping it out of the worker's way that is another plus side to why the forage wagon in my opinion i think is better than baling now we can go put this straight in here and obviously if we need this we'll just come along with the normal trailer and put it in our TMR mixer. There we go. I definitely think this is going to be the better way, in, in my opinion. Like I said, I do like bailing. It's all good fun. But I just think this is so much easier. And obviously now i found the little TMR mixer. I didn't know that little TMR mixer existed. 
I think that's quite a new thing that's just come out though. There was um like most of them are big factories, which I'm sure you've all seen yourself if you play this game. I didn't really want a big factory because a map like this, you've got nowhere to put it. Where can you put a big factory apart from buying one of them development lands? So that little TMR mixer is it's a little beaut. So I'm gonna get this done. We'll collect all the straw. We'll see how many more loads we get and we'll see what the outcome is of soya beans. I really can't wait to put it in the silo to see what the potential figure is we could get in June. All this soya beans. We'll find out in just a second. So we're just here then with the second trailer full of straw. As you can see the combine's finished. We've got a trailer full there. The combine's parked back over. You can just see it in the distance over there. Couldn't quite get all the straw in. Might be a bit loud that the fans have kicked in for the uh, the shed. The blower system. So we just got like literally two rows to do a straw. And that's all done. Now, when I was doing the straw, I noticed that the worker and the combine, he, he didn't go and do like the, the next unload. And I was thinking, what's going on there? And I couldn't work out why. I think I might have worked out why. I'm in the field with this trailer, which is potentially a trailer you could tip into. I think this is why the worker kind of panicked because it didn't go anywhere. It didn't self unload. It just sat on the spot. And you can actually, you can just see the spot I'm talking about just here. As you can see where it's just crept forward as it kind of realized it was full, lifted the header up and just crept forward and left a little bit of crop on the floor. But he just sat there and didn't do anything. I think because this trailer, I'm working in the field with this trailer, as the other trailers sat in the field as well, I think he got confused to not realize like where to go. Because there's two trailers, one's moving about and one's sat there. I think that's what's doing it. Because as I'm sort of sat still, I unloaded him. When he went back sort of to finish off, for the, like, the final little bit, he did actually self-unload. But that's because this trailer wasn't moving. It's, yeah, it's, it's very strange how it works. But I, I think that it's got to be something to do with that. This, this trailer moving around the field has obviously confused the worker thinking, hang on a minute, the trailer I want to tip into, it's constantly moving. What's going on? There we go. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, a lot of straw. That blow is loud. So what do we end up with crop-wise? Let's uh, let's have a look. We'll go put this in the... Actually, I'll leave this one here. We'll go put this in the silo, and then we'll have a look at the figures so we see we can potential income we could get in June for soybean. So that's everything all packed away. The soybeans has gone in the silo in here. All the tractors are put away. The forage wagon's back in its place. Everything's cleaned. We are pretty much done for the day. There isn't really much we could do. Like I said, winter time's a little bit slow, so... Really, that's the only fuel we can harvest. It's going to be next year before Jimmy's Field's ready to harvest. So, over winter, basically the next thing we can do is going to be in Jan, where we can sell the silage bales, we can sell the linseed, we can make some money there. Unless, over winter, or maybe in the next, maybe, maybe December, I don't know, if we can get another cut off the grass, then we'll come back for the next episode and do the grass. Pick it up with the forage wagon and the uh, silage additive. And then we'll go and put that in the uh, the pit by the cows. And uh, we'll actually blanket it over for winter. And we'll make some silage. But I don't know if we're going to get another cut or not. But uh, we'll have a quick, let's just have a quick sprint across here to the grass. And just see, is it, what's it looking like? Mm, it's growing. It says two or three. Are we going to be able to get another cut just in time? I'm not sure. But look at these things. They're, they're very small. Tiny things. Now, one mistake I did make, I did sell the bale trailer thinking, I'm not doing bales anymore, I don't need it. As soon as I sold it, I suddenly realised I've got these to try and transport. So we will lease it. It's only, I think, 700 quid. So we'll lease it again just to do this. Yeah, this is going to be quite a few trips to get this because I think there is about 100 bales. It would have been more, but obviously we sold two lots of 16 across to the sell point first because I made the wrong bale size. 
But now, though, let's have a quick look and see what could we expect on our soya beans at the best sell time. Oh, my word. Soya beans, we got 52,000 litres of soya beans off that field. And at the highest price, we could expect a potential income of £338,000. Oh, that sounds a good figure. Things are starting to lock up. So let me know what you think then. Do we get that withered barley field that we sort of passed on the Cotswold stores or on the way to the Cotswold stores earlier on in this episode? Do we get it? Do we fill it full of sugar bean? Sugar bean? Sugar cane? That was a cross between sugar beet and sugar... <laughs> oh dear. I need to go and have a lie down. Do we go fill it full of sugar cane? Do we go and lease it and add it onto our leasing list? Money's looking better. We still got this field later on in the year. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do we get the withered field? Yes or no? Do we put sugar cane in it? Yes or no? I'd love to hear your feedback. But for now, though, that is going to wrap up this episode and potentially wrap up winter. I might see you back in Jan when we sell some bales and sell some linseed. Thank you so much for watching then. I really do appreciate it. And all the likes and everything, I really do appreciate it. It means a lot. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.